So CAD programs and designing things for 3D printing are obviously only suited for really high-end uh, desktop type machines, right? Yeah, probably not. Stick around, let's see what I found. I'm Ron and this is my place. So I was browsing around on um, Facebook and one of those annoying ads that pop up popped up and it's always creepy how well attuned they are to you but in this case it turned out to be a good thing because what I saw was an iPad app that they were claiming would work for 3D design. Um, obviously I was a bit skeptical. Um, I've tried a number of them. They're all kind of hokey. They don't work all that well. Um, this one, though, touted that it was used with the Apple Pen. So you do have to have a, a pretty decent iPad to use it. Um, I think it's a iPad Pro or... Uh, I'm not sure. One of the latest and greatest ones, I guess. Uh, but anyways, I just thought it was interesting, so I gave it a shot. And lo and behold, it worked. And the concept behind it is that I can be sitting on the couch watching TV and doodling if an idea strikes. And instead of having to get up and go to the computer, I can mess around with, with this. It's not as good as like Fusion 360, of course. It's got limitations, but I was amazed. Uh, at least amazed enough that I would talk to you all about it. Um, it's called Shaper 3D, um, S-H-A-P-R 3D. Um, I'll put a link down below. Um, but you have to use this, uh, an Apple Pen with pencil with it, but it's really cool. It feels really, I don't know, just commonsensical. It, it just, it works. It does what you want it to do. Um, it, the few things that I've noticed that I don't like is that it's not as easy to go back. Um, you get kind of used to Fusion 360 where you can take all the steps back. This one, you you don't. If you mess it up and keep going forward, um, like I did on this design, you, you then have to kind of go backwards and, and re, refix things and then redesign them again. But really, like I said, it's it's what its point is. If I want to do a hardcore design thing, I'm going to go to the computer. This is just for doodling and playing and messing around. And I thought it worked great. Um, so I happened to have a problem when it came to cable management, which I'm going to end up doing another video on. But it's what inspired me making this, and I thought it was the perfect test. Um, so I'll just show you a little bit about what... i going to switch cameras here. I don't have any... Uh, screen capture capabilities on my iPad. So you're gonna, hopefully this will work for you. But this is the one it is, it's Shaper 3D. And this is what I made, and it's just got kind of its typical things. And I'll show you what I made, and then we'll go in and I'll, so I don't screw this up, I'll play with another. But it makes it really nice, you can move things around, you can zoom in and out. You can pivot all over the place, so you're looking at stuff. You've got everything you would expect, but let me go ahead and uh, start another one, another design here. And so if I double tap, all right, so again, I'm not super good at this, so I apologize. Uh, and I'll try and keep it all square. But just to give you a little bit of a rundown, you can go to the videos and see them yourself, but it has all the moves and rotates and scales and copies and rotating around and mirroring. Um, you can extrude, you shells, loss, unions, subtracts, intersects, revolves, sweeps, replace face, offsets. I mean, and this is all the free stuff. It, it's, it's really kind of crazy. And... Um, yeah, I, I haven't seen any major limitation. One limitation of the free version is you can only export it to print, or at, you you can't you can't out export it in something you could then bring into Fusion 360. Um, you'd have to pay for that, and even then, it's not crazy expensive, but it's not cheap. 
So anyway, so I mean, it's easy enough to like, if I wanted to draw a square, oops, if I wanted to draw a square, you go around. And then if I wanted to then select that, You just touch it and pull. I mean, it, it's it's crazy. <laughs> and let's say I wanted to put a hole in this on this side over here. I can double tap that. Now I'm looking right at that. And if I want to draw a circle, I just draw a circle. So then if I wanted to extrude that, out again I'm not perfect at this but you just grab it and pull through and now suddenly you have a hole and let's say I wanted to I don't know let's let's say I wanted to arc this out here I could basically um, If you wiggle your pen, it goes from arc to, yeah, so there. So at that point, oh, so then I could take this and extrude it out. And then all of a sudden I've got this, whatever you want to call this. Anyways, I think that's enough. You you get the idea. It's just, you, as you get better and better with it, you start understanding the way it works. It's, again, not the, the replacement for Fusion 360 or anything like that, but it sure works good for, I mean, it's an iPad with a pencil. So there you go. It's, it's not... The, it's not a replacement. It's never going to be a replacement for Fusion 360. But it's simple, it's free, it's kind of neat and fun, and I don't know. I, I made a, a nice little uh, cable holder with it, and I was pleased with it. So I just thought it would be neat to show you all. Um, I thought it was cool, and I exported it STL directly into Dropbox, and then put, picked it up here on my um, desktop, sliced it, and printed it. And it worked great. And then had to do an iterative design and go back and make a change, and then printed it again. And so hope you liked it. Um, if you have an iPad and an iPencil um, or Apple Pencil or whatever you want to call it, give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Uh, otherwise, have a great weekend. Print everything you can. And remember, subscribe, like, dislike, let me know why, etc., etc.